In this video, we'll write the balanced net ionic equation for CuCl2 plus Na3PO4. This is copper 2 chloride and sodium phosphate. The first thing we need to do when we balance net ionic equations, we have to balance the molecular equation. And this is the molecular equation. So I can see that I have three coppers here and just one here. I'm going to put a three in front of the copper chloride. Now I have three times two, six chlorine atoms and only one here put a six here, six sodiums, just three sodiums here. I'll put a two here and that's it. This is the balanced molecular equation. Now we can write the state for each substance. Chlorides are very soluble. So we're going to write AQ that's aqueous. It'll dissolve and dissociate into its ions. If you know your solubility rules, sodium compounds, very soluble. So aqueous, and then compounds with the phosphate ion in general are insoluble unless they're like sodium phosphate or other group one phosphates, potassium phosphate, but in general insoluble. So in this case, copper two phosphate, it's insoluble. These two react, they produce this solid and that's a precipitate that falls to the bottom of the test tube. So this reaction produces a precipitate. That's the copper two phosphate. Then sodium compounds, chlorides and then the sodium compounds, very soluble, AQ. These are the states. Next, we can split the strong electrolytes into their ions, and this will give us the complete ionic equation. We don't know the charge on copper, but we do know that the chloride ions always one minus. And since we have two of them, the copper has to be two plus. So we have three copper two ions at Cu two plus. I'll write the states later. Plus we have two of the chloride ions, two Cl minus. Sodium is in group one, that'll have a one plus charge. And the phosphate ion, the whole thing is three minus, good one to remember. So we'll have two times three, six sodium ions, and then we'll have two of the phosphate ions. And these are the reactants in our net ionic equation. For the products with net ionic equations, we don't split solids apart. So we'll keep this whole copper two phosphate here together. Then we have a plus and a minus. So we have six sodium ions, just like the reactants, plus six chloride ions, also like the reactants. At this point, we can cross out spectator ions. They're on both sides of the complete ionic equation. So here's our reactants and then down here are products. I can see that I've made a mistake here because I said I had two chloride ions, but I have to multiply by the coefficient. So really three times two, this should be a six. So sometimes when you're crossing your spectator ions, you might expect them to match up. If they don't, be careful, check and make sure you've done this part correctly. So spectator ions, I've got six chlorides here and then six chlorides here. Let's cross those out. Those are spectator ions. Then I have six sodium ions here in the reactants, six in the products. Cross those out, but everything else is unique. So this is the net ionic equation for CuCl2 plus Na3PO4. Let me clean this up, write the states in. We'll have a net ionic equation. So this is the balanced net ionic equation for copper two chloride plus sodium phosphate. You'll note that charge is conserved. Three times two plus, that's six plus, and then two times three minus, that's six minus. All this adds up to zero. So the net charge is zero here. Neutral compound net charge is zero. The atoms, they're balanced too. If I hadn't caught that error earlier where I had, instead of six, I had the two, this wouldn't work out right. The charge would be messed up and the atoms, they wouldn't bounce either. This is Dr. B and thanks for watching.